Hello everyone, Ladislas Maurice from TheWanderingInvestor.com. So today I'm with Alan, my U.S. attorney based here in Medellin in Colombia. Alan, how are you? I'm good. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. So today we're going to be discussing how to obtain residency in Colombia because there have been some changes that were implemented in September, correct? Yes. So in September, uh, new rules came into play. This is the first major change in the visa regime in Colombia for many, many years. And it was pretty, pretty drastic. So before, specifically for real estate investors, you could obtain what was called a residency visa, which meant that if you invested approximately $160,000 plus or minus, you would get a five-year residency visa. Now this option is gone, correct? Gone, kaput. So, um, and let me back up even a little bit further. So. A lot of people misuse, or at least they confuse terms. So it doesn't mean you can't come to Colombia and live in Colombia, right? Uh, previously, under the old rules, there were two types of visas for people who wanted to buy property. The first type was called a migrant visa. Uh, and if you were to invest above $90,000, $95,000 uh, this year, uh, you could get a three-year migrant visa. And with that visa, you can come in and out as much as you want. It's just a normal visa. You could come and live in Colombia if you wanted to. You could get a new migrant visa uh, for another three years. And in year five, you can then get residency, right? So you can still do that visa. That visa hasn't changed very much. It still exists. Uh, what, what has changed is that previously you could invest the 160 you mentioned earlier, or thereabouts, uh, and get immediate residency. You could cut the line. You don't have to wait the five years. You can just get immediate residency, and that's gone. Uh, so if you were investing in real estate, your one go-to strategy is to now go back to the migrant visa strategy, which keeps you in Colombia. You would have to apply a couple more times, and you will eventually get official residency, which some people want. But in practical terms, for most investors, it really doesn't change much. You get basically the same thing you would get with the residency visa. You could come to Colombia, you can live in Colombia, you can leave and come back. There are some serious differences, but in general, for most investors, uh, it's basically not a big difference. So for wandering investors such sure. as myself, the previous residency visa meant that I would just need to check into Colombia every two years mm -hmm. for the residency to remain active. But yep. with the migrant visa, I cannot leave Colombia for more than six months at a time, correct? That's right. That's one of the biggest uh, differences. So under the old rules, if you were to get a residency visa, you can just pop in Colombia every couple of years and you maintain your visa. With this migrant visa, now you have an obligation to come to Colombia every six months. It doesn't have to be for weeks. It can just be a day. It could be you know, half a day. But technically speaking, you lose this visa if you, leave, if you leave Colombia more than six consecutive months. So again, that's a big one for some people. You know, uh, I have clients who have properties in Dubai, properties in Miami, properties you know, in, in other places, and they spend specific time in different places for tax reasons. So coming to Colombia for some of these clients is, is kind of annoying. Um, so that's a thing for some clients. But for most of my clients, it's not a big deal because it's just, you know, every six months, just pop in and you're done. So it's yeah. possible to have the migrant visa without becoming a tax resident of Colombia. Sure. So a lot of people confuse these two terms. So your tax situation, whether you need to, whether you become a tax resident, whether you need to file taxes, has absolutely nothing to do with your visa, right? You could get a residency visa, you can get a migrant visa, um, you can get other types of visas, and so long as you're not physically in Colombia more than 183 days within any 12 month period, you do not become a tax resident. So, so the visa is separate from the tax. Uh, analysis that you would have to conduct to figure out if you are either a tax resident and if so whether you need to file taxes. And what is the path to citizenship on this new, well, on this migrant visa? Right. This is the second biggest difference. And, and this is a big deal for some clients. 
Under the old rules, if you got immediate residency, you saved yourself five years, right? Because the migrant visa gets you residency after five years. But with residency, you cut the line. You saved yourself five years. Once you have residency, you wait five years. And by the time that you can renew your visa, your residency visa, you could apply for citizenship. Okay, so essentially okay. before it was five years, path to citizenship, now it's more like 10 years. That's right. N now you're adding five years to the process of applying for citizenship and getting a new, a new passport, for sure. Okay, I mean, most people don't care, but for those who do care, that's, that's exactly definitely, right. That's definitely that's exactly issue. right. And the other typical ways of mm -hmm. obtaining a visa or residency here is through the rentista visa and also for retired people. Can you sure. elaborate on these two programs? So uh, with the new rules, uh, there have been some serious changes. So the rentista visa, this is a visa where if you can show that you're receiving income from some source above a certain amount, uh, I always tell clients, you know, just plan for 2,800 US dollars, that number goes up and down. Um, that visa is no longer a migrant visa, right? That's gone. It's now, it, it, well, it exists, it's just now a visitor's visa. So you couldn't get a rentista visa and eventually get residency. That's not long, that's gone. So that's, that's the first, uh, I think, answer to your question. Now, if you're retired, excuse me, if you're retiring or uh, you're retired at this point, you could plan to apply for a retirement visa. And it's also a migrant visa. It's sort of the same category as the person who buys the property and gets a migrant visa you get three years, uh, and in five years you get residence. So it's the same type of thing. There's, a, there's been several changes uh, that have been affecting a lot of our retirement uh, applicants. Uh, the first is they're more and more focused on getting a security background check. Okay? So if you're applying, they'll want to get something official from your current residency jurisdiction that says that you're not a bad person, <laughs> okay? So just a criminal background check? Criminal background check. Secondly, they're more and more focused on health. So you're going to have to get a, both a uh, medical health certificate as well as a mental health certificate. That's becoming more and more of a thing, particularly for veterans. This is a thing. Basically, more and more, they want to ensure that the people that receive a visa, number one, can pay their way in Colombia for their own health. If someone is super unhealthy, more and more we are concerned that they won't uh, allow you to get a visa, particularly if you can't show a good amount of income. Uh, because eventually, and this is in fact a fact, some of these foreigners are now becoming wards of the state, so to speak. In other words, the Colombian government has to reach into its own pocket to take care of certain people that come to Colombia because they're fairly elderly, they don't receive the income they, they were expecting, et cetera. So on the one hand, that's the reason they're so much focused on, on, on the health stuff. The mental health thing is more and more of a thing, right? And why is that? Because more and more people are coming to Colombia with mental health problems. And a good portion are, are, are veterans, right? Uh, and, and this is a thing, you know? So, if there's a veteran with a history of PTSD, mental health issues, the, ch the chances that your visa could be not approved are getting higher and higher. So, um, you know, that's, that's a really big change to the retirement visa, for sure. Interesting. And the rentista visa is essentially is useless nowadays. Useless. Well, it's not useless. It's useless to the extent that someone wants to get eventual residency. Okay. I mean, people are just better off putting 95K in That's exactly a right. So if you qualify for a rentista visa because you receive a good amount of income every month. Yeah, just buy real estate. Just buy real estate yeah. because it's just a much better visa. You could conceivably just get a visitor's visa and just stay in Colombia as long as you want, but you will never get residency. It's not as good of a visa as getting a migrant visa by far. So between those two, it's not even close. Uh, if I have the cash, I'll just buy property, for sure. And for example, if I were to come here and have a child here, would this entitle me to residency or a migrant visa? So under the old rules, if I were the parent of a Colombian national, in other words, my child was born in Colombia, 
I could apply for residency. Not anymore. Okay? I could apply for a migrant visa, okay. which will eventually get me residency. Okay? okay? That's another big change of the rules for sure. And if someone marries a Colombian? So this is the most interesting change to the rules. Uh, and just, just hear me out. You ready? So under the old rules, there were two ways. Well, there were different ways to get married in Colombia, but the two primary ones were just a, a regular civil marriage. You know, think, you know, there are ver versions of this. There's a ceremony. Uh, you know, there's, there's an administrative law judge or a notary that, that certifies that you're, you know, you're married, et cetera. And that process is a little bit annoying because to get it done, you require a lot of documents to be issued abroad. You need to get a birth certificate. You need to get a certificate of being single. You need to get, you know, divorce decrees. It, it gets complicated, right? But once, you know, after six weeks, two months that you, you kind of do a lot of, you know, walking around, getting all these documents together, then you can apply and the process is pretty self, you know, explanatory, pretty, pretty straightforward. But it's annoying. The other way previously was what's called a common law marriage. So basically, it's just what it means. Basically, you know, I'm not married, and I love that our viewers are looking at my cat going behind me, but I'm not married, but I'm living with someone, right? Uh, and because I'm living with someone, I am declaring that I'm in a common law marriage with that person. That marital relationship, to get that certified, very simple. All you need is your passport. That's it. Uh, but massive risk in terms of asset protection. Well, under either scenario, we always recommend that, that people uh, execute a prenuptial agreement, a very simple document that certifies that no marital property is being created as a result of the marriage or marital relationship because we're, you know, I don't want to get into uh, semantics, but, but one thing is a marriage, which is civil marriage. Another thing is a marital relationship, which is a, a, a common law marriage. Bottom line, no matter what, you always need to sign a prenup, period. Just, just do it, okay? Hopefully that answers your question. But real quick, regarding the change in the visa. So under the old rules, if I were to apply for a visa, whether it's the really annoying civil marriage thing or the really super simple common law marriage option, I could just apply and under either scenario, I could get you know, a three-year visa uh, pretty simply, like very, very simply. And within two years, remember how it takes five years to get residency? Mm -hmm. You just need two years to get nice. residence. That's under the old rules. Now, what has happened is they recognize that, wait a minute, a lot of people are entering into these common law marriages because it's so simple. They want to get residency. It's a really simple way to kind of get to residency. So who knows how many of these relationships are actual relationships? You know, who knows how much visa fraud is going on out there? So they change the rules. Now, the civil marriage visa it takes three years, not, no longer two, but now they're extended it three years to get residency. It's still way faster than the other migrant visas, but it's a benefit, but they, they did ex extend that. On the common law marriage, it's no longer, it, it no longer makes sense. It just doesn't. Now you gotta wait one year before you can apply. So you certify your relationship, you wait one year, then you apply. Secondly, you only get one year at a time. You could get eventual residency, if you wait five years, but you're going to have to apply five times. That's a lot of paperwork. That's a lot of paperwork. So my advice with if you're going to get married or enter into some type of relationship, just get married through the civil process. It's a little more annoying. It takes a long time. It takes a longer amount of time to get it done, but, but it's way better than most other visa types. Common law marriage, that's old news. That's gone. Are, if that makes sense. Are there any other ways one can obtain a migrant visa or residency? There are others. Not everyone will fit into those categories. Um, they're very specific to, to specific industries, etc. Uh, the work visa is still a pretty good way to, to get eventual residency, but you're going to you're gonna have to have a, a local sponsor. Okay? And that sponsor needs to make a good amount of money, at least $30,000 per month, uh, to be able to kind of qualify. There are other visa types. I just want to mention real quick, they just added the nomad visa. This is a big deal for a lot of people. So if your eventual focus is in residency in Colombia, that's not a bad option, assuming you qualify. These are very specific to entrepreneurs, people who are a little bit, literally nomads, like they're working for foreign clients. 
uh, virtually. They make a certain amount of money per month, et cetera. That, that, that's a really big change to, 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 the, to the rules. Um, and then let's just say the following. Colombia is doing what a lot of jurisdictions are doing. They're trying to become more professionalized. You know, every time they change the rules, they're trying to catch up with Costa Rica, somewhat Mexico. You know, people, different jurisdictions in the region require X, Y, and Z in addition to whatever to get visas. Colombia is trying to mostly catch up because they're still getting their act together. Um, so there's been a lot of changes to make the process much more professional, but much more professional equals more annoying. So the process is going to be more annoying than before, um, but again, we're here to help if, if needed. Yeah, and it's a beautiful country. At the end of the day, it's worth the trouble. Yeah. It's a very beautiful and, and fun place and affordable place to, to spend time. Yep, absolutely. So if you're interested in finding out more about Alan's services, there is his email below. There's also a link with his fees, etc. And if you get in touch with this team, they'll send you a whole bunch of brochures for free oh, yeah. with a, a lot of information on all the processes. Absolutely. All right, Alan, always a pleasure. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. It was good talking to you again and good to talk to you guys as well. You can go to my website, thewanderinginvestor.com, and sign up to the private list. It's entirely free. This way, you will be getting insider information as I travel around the world looking for opportunities. Lastly, feel free to follow me on Instagram at The Wandering Investor. I look forward to hearing from you.